Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Ken Kitts, president of the University of North Alabama, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and staff of UNA, I welcome you to this, our fall commencement ceremony honoring bachelor's degree graduates of the Anderson College of Nursing and Health Professions and the College of Education and Human Sciences. Please rise as we bow our heads for a moment of silence and give thanks for our many blessings this year and for these special graduates here this evening. Thank you and amen, and please remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you and please be seated. This ceremony represents a very special time for each graduate and his or her family and friends. To maintain the dignity of this distinctive occasion and out of respect for all of our graduates, we ask that you please silence cell phones and remain seated until the ceremony is ended so that each graduate's name can be heard when announced. Now commencement is a celebration of academic attainment and to bring greetings to you from the academic community of the University of North Alabama. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Ross Alexander. Thank you, President Kitts, and thank you for everything you do for UNA and our fine students. Congratulations, graduates. I, too, welcome and thank you for attending this ceremony. The faculty, staff, and I commend and applaud your momentous accomplishments. Graduates, in earning your baccalaureate degree, you join an elite group, as only roughly one-third of all Americans possess a bachelor's degree. Perhaps more importantly, as the overwhelming majority of you are from Alabama and will forge careers in Alabama, only roughly one-quarter of Alabamians possess a baccalaureate degree. Therefore, you are all very well positioned to excel in the workforce both now and in the future because of your UNA degree. I would argue, in fact, that in attaining your UNA degree, you are better prepared than those who have graduated from other universities in the state. At UNA, you have been educated, trained, and credentialed to immediately enter the workforce to fulfill in-demand, vital, and high-paying jobs across a number of fields and sectors. With its emphasis on applied learning, problem-solving, cultural competence, quantitative reasoning, 
and work-based skills, your UNA education will serve you as a career catalyst and accelerator. Importantly, your education, experience, and degree has prepared you to deal with change, challenges, and an ever-evolving economic marketplace. Recent trends and data indicate that most of you will have four or five different jobs before you, turn, before you turn 30 and several different careers during your working life. Your UNA degree will empower you to excel in this environment of constant change. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not tell you that we want you back as graduate students. At the appropriate time, please discover and enroll in one of our affordable, flexible, and primarily online graduate degrees that can further facilitate your career success. Thank you, congratulations, and Roar Lions. Thank you, Provost Alexander. I want to introduce now several people who are celebrating this special occasion with you and ask that these individuals stand when their names are called. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. On stage with me are Dr. Vicki Pierce, Dean of the Anderson College of Nursing and Health Professions, Dr. Katie Kinney, Dean of the College of Education and Human Sciences, Dr. Vince Bruton, Dean of the Cole Honors College, Ms. Susan Adams, President of the UNA Alumni Association, Mr. Ron Patterson, Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Kimberly Greenway, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Ross Alexander, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. And Dr. Jason Watson, President of the UNA Faculty Senate. Please join me in welcoming the stage party. I also want to recognize and thank Dr. Lloyd Jones, the members of the UNA Jazz Band and student vocalist Dylan Haynes for providing the wonderful music for these ceremonies. Please help me thank our band members. And now to our guest speaker, graduates. Our goal at each commencement event is to invite a speaker whose life experiences will have meaning for you and who will inspire you as you embark on the next chapter in your lives. When considering earlier this fall who we'd like to invite for this December commencement, our minds went to someone who has inspired each of us beyond measure as the university has navigated the pandemic. Dr. Kimberly Greenway, herself a two-time graduate of UNA, has been employed here in various positions for 28 years now. Since 2018, she's been our Vice President for Student Affairs, whose areas of oversight include health services, housing and residence life, student conduct, student counseling services, student engagement, Title IX, the Galat University Center Operations and Event Management, and the University Police. As you can imagine, all of that in itself is a full load. And then, as if she doesn't have enough to do, in the spring of 2020, I asked her to chair our COVID-19 Recovery Task Force. Over the past year and a half or more, Dr. Greenway has given her of herself in ways that can only be described as far above and beyond the call of duty. When the pandemic hit in the spring of 2020 and the university had to shift mid-semester to online instruction only, Dr. Greenway led the effort to make sure that the approximately 1,700 students living on campus had the appropriate assistance and support as they made decisions on whether to return home or remain in the residence halls. In addition, her health services team became central to our efforts to mitigate the pandemic's impact on campus. The broadly based COVID-19 recovery task force that she chaired met frequently over the past 18 months to consider all factors involved, questions raised, and national health guidance available as UNA has worked to provide as normal of a college experience for our students as is safe to do so under these very unusual circumstances. Simply put, Dr. Greenway's level of energy and dedication to the health and well-being of our campus are both commendable and admirable. If you read her bio on page 29 of the program, you can see that Dr. Greenway also engages in various consulting projects, scholarly activities, and community service. Yet she considers her most important work as being a positive role model for others, and she hopes that her example of service will inspire others. As I noted earlier, she has succeeded with both of those objectives, 
and the university owes her much gratitude for her many years of loyal and committed service to this institution. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in expressing our thanks by giving a warm UNA welcome to one of our own, Dr. Kimberly Greenway. Good evening. I join the stage party in welcoming our graduates, family, and friends. We are really glad to be able to honor the accomplishments of our graduates today. Graduates, you have earned a valuable degree. As an alumna of UNA, I can personally attest to its value and the opportunities made available to me as a result. I suppose it's only normal that in preparation for today, I thought back to my own commencement experience. I can honestly say that I remember more about how I felt that day than what anyone said. In fact, I don't even remember who the speakers were. I do remember being hopeful and inspired, in spite of not remembering the words that were spoken. Who knew I would be standing here after all these years as one of those speakers in hope of, of inspiring the next generation of graduates and with the promise to keep it short. Seriously, it is an honor to be here today. I love this university and I'm really proud to be a part of celebrating this milestone with you. And what a milestone it is, especially in the light of the challenges that you have overcome to be here. You've likely heard it said that we are living in unprecedented times, and in fact we are. We don't yet know how this season of history will be recorded, but I am confident that the lessons you've learned and the perseverance you've demonstrated will contribute to individual and community success in the future. I want to commend you for that perseverance. You have faced the normal rigors of university life, academic rigor, the challenge of balancing coursework, jobs, and family responsibilities, and you have endured the effects of a global pandemic with economic uncertainty, isolation, and increased concern for friends and family. The pandemic certainly brought its own unique challenges for each of us. Based on current statistics, many of you may have experienced increased anxiety. You worried about whether internships, clinical experiences, and other academic opportunities would be available to you. And yet, here you are today in your academic regalia, having persevered to this point. To some degree, you and your families have all made personal sacrifice to be here celebrating today. So give yourself credit for what you've overcome to be here. This commencement ceremony symbolizes the beginning of the next step of your journey. As you think about that next step, I would like for us to consider what success might look like for you. In the next few minutes, I'll provide examples of people I consider to be successful and leave you with a few recommendations based on my own experience and observations. So what does success even mean? Merriam-Webster defines it as getting or achieving health, wealth, respect, or fame. The Cambridge Dictionary defines success as the achieving of the results wanted or hoped for. I personally resonate with the latter definition that doesn't require fame or fortune or even wide recognition. I think about Claudette Colvin, who at the age of 15 as a young African-American woman refused to give up her seat to a white woman nine months before Rosa Parks became famous for doing the same thing during the 1950s civil rights movement. Colvin was also one of the five plaintiffs in Brower versus Gale, the court case that eventually led to the desegregation of public bus transportation in Alabama. In addition to her contributions in the civil rights movement, Colvin also served as a nurse's aide in a Manhattan nursing home for 35 years. And although recognized in isolated literary works, Colvin has still not been wide, widely recognized for her contributions. I recently also read about another less known success story, Ruth Coker Burke, who became aware in the 1980s that many people with AIDS were being abandoned by their family and friends due to the stigma and fear surrounding the AIDS epidemic. At age 26, Ruth took it upon herself to care for what would end up being more than a thousand AIDS victims over a 10 year period, even burying some of them in her own family cemetery. Another Ruth that you may be more familiar with is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a well-known associate justice of the Supreme Court from 1993 until her death in 2020. I consider her a success not necessarily because I agreed with her political viewpoints, but because she stood for equity. She listened to a good argument owned her own mistakes, and respected opposing views. I appreciated that she, by her own account, was a close friend of, of Justice Scalia, who was a staunch conservative. 
while Ginsburg herself was a very staunch liberal. As reported in, by NPR in 2016, after Scalia's death, Ginsburg stated that reading his dissenting view on the court brief made her argument even better. Ginsburg had a phenomenal career and overcame numerous obstacles that made way for the success of others. And you can likely think of other success stories in the people, of people you know in your fields or throughout the course of history, some more well-known than others. Joan of Arc, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and we could go on. Arguably, some of these individuals were better positioned for success while other overcame great obstacles to succeed. Some have been recognized as catalysts for changing industry, law, science, and world health. Others changed the world in less conspicuous ways by making daily choices that affected positive change. So what does this mean for you? What do you consider success and who do you consider to be successful? A famous person, a mentor, or someone else you admire? Consider for a moment whether you could be that successful. Some of you know you can and others can't even imagine it. I wonder if the difference in achieving success is in realizing that it can be you. Is there a medical cure or treatment waiting to be discovered? An entrepreneurial opportunity yet to be launched? A new educational delivery system or strategy yet to be implemented? Will you raise a child that could change history? Will you teach or mentor a future success story? My point is that successful people are just that, people like you and me. They put their clothes on in the morning like we do. They eat, they sleep, they work, have families, and make daily choices just like you do in the face of triumph and disappointment, good times and bad times. Your presence here today shows that you can stand among the successful when you leave here and step into the next leg of your journey. The strategies you use to overcome obstacles to this point can be applied to success in the future. The dedication, commitment, and perseverance that you applied to earning your degree can be applied to new opportunities, family, and future employment. Based on my years of experience and interactions with successful people, I would like to leave you with four simple tips for success. After all, what kind of commencement speaker would I be if I didn't at least give some advice? These are not new strategies, however, and someone likely passed them to me along the way without my giving them credit but I've applied them and found them to be true for myself and for others whom I consider successful. Number one, have integrity. Not all successful people have it, but in the end, integrity never loses. If you have to sacrifice integrity for success, choose integrity every time. Number two, let your work speak for itself. It will create opportunity for success, whether or not you're ever recognized for it. Number three, Take chances on yourself and others. Taking chances does come with risk of failure, but if you're willing to fail, admit mistakes, and make adjustments, success is much more likely. And finally, number four, celebrate success and give credit where it is due. The importance of recognizing the contributions of others to your own success is as important as the win itself. So what does success look like on the next step of your journey? That's up to you. Who knows how many future Claudette Colvins or Rosa Parks or Ruth Bader Ginsburgs are sitting in this room. In the next phase of your journey, you will face adversity, change, joy, accomplishment, and every 100 years or so, maybe a pandemic. I hope as you leave today and begin the next step that you'll look back on your experience at UNA and remember how you persevered and what you learned. I hope that you will fondly remember those who helped you succeed. And I hope that whether or not your success is widely known or never recognized, you will always persevere. Congratulations, graduates and Roar Lions. Thank you very much, Dr. Greenway, for those inspiring words. It is my pleasure to again introduce the UNA Jazz Band and Mr. Dylan Haynes for a musical selection.
Keller Key Award was established as a memorial to the late President James Albert and Mrs. Mariglen Keller. A Keller Key is presented at each commencement to the honor graduates who, on the basis of having earned all credits for the bachelor's degree at this university, have made the highest scholastic average. Will the following recipient of the Keller Key for this ceremony Please proceed to the stage to my right. Rachel Lee Kirby. <laughs> Ms. Kirby completes the Bachelor of Science in Education degree with a major in elementary education, special education collaborative K through six. For this semester, qualifying for the Keller Award meant having a grade point average of at least 4.0 on a scale of 4.0. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Kirby. The deans will now present candidates for the conferral of their respective bachelor's degrees with Dr. Vicki Pierce, Dean of the Anderson College of Nursing and Health Professions, please come forward. As you are able, would candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Anderson College of Nursing and Health Professions please stand and remain standing. President Kitts, it is with great pleasure that I present these candidates to you for the conferral of their bachelor's degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees for the University of North Alabama, I now bestow upon each of you your respective bachelor's degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. And congratulations. You may be seated. Would Dr. Katie Kinney, Dean of the College of Education and Human Sciences, please come forward. 
as you are able, would candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Education and Human Sciences please stand and remain standing. President Kitts, it is with great pleasure that I present these candidates to you for the conferral of their bachelor's degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees for the University of North Alabama, I now bestow upon each of you your respective bachelor's degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. And congratulations. You may be seated. Graduates, you are now alumni of the University of North Alabama. And in that regard, UNA Alumni Association President Susan Adams will now come to the podium to extend greetings. Good evening, fellow graduates. I'm Susan Adams, President of the National Alumni Association here at UNA, and I would like to congratulate you on reaching this great milestone in your life. As you walk across the stage tonight, just remember that learning does not stop here, and it doesn't stop today, and neither should your connection to the University of North Alabama. The University of North Alabama will, be con will continue to be a resource for you, not only in your career, but throughout your lifetime. By utilizing the UNA network of over 70,000 alumni, you'll be connected with people and places all over the world. Let those connections go to work for you. As my parents told me when I started my journey at UNA, they said to take advantage of every opportunity to learn something new, and I heed that advice every day. And as you graduate, your first job may not be your dream job, but you'll learn something new that you can take with you on to the next opportunity. As an alumni association, we are very proud of your accomplishments and we cannot wait to see what you do in the future. Always, always remember that the UNA National Alumni Association Network will go with you wherever you go. Please keep us informed of your progress and your achievements by contacting the University Alumni Office. We'd love to hear from you. We look forward to starting this next chapter with you, and we cannot wait to see you at local events, upcoming alumni social gatherings, athletic sporting events, homecoming, and much more. Best wishes to you all and Roar Lions. Thank you very much, Ms. Adams. So, graduates, we've all had our time up on the stage, and now it's uh, our opportunity to invite you to come to the stage and, and be recognized for these uh, degrees and for the hard work that brings you here this evening. At this time, I will ask the marshals to please begin conducting the candidates to the platform. Olivia Rhiannon Perry. A degree in memoriam is being awarded to Olivia Rhiannon Perry. Her diploma will be presented to her mother, Amanda Perry, who is accompanied by her brother, Ian Perry. Sarah Beth Searcy, cum laude. Callie Elizabeth Daniel. Eduardo Quinn, magna cum laude. John Robert Wesley Bates. Adrian Michael Berry, cum laude.
Rachel Lee Kirby, summa cum laude, Cole Honors College. Cortez Lamont Hall. Dexter Boykin. Andre Little. Tashad Terrius Jones. Rachel Michelle Toller, summa cum laude. Kristen Marie Dubilac, magna cum laude. Autumn Elizabeth Smith, Cole Honors College. Molly Ann Spence. Rachel Owens, cum laude. Catherine Marie Morgan, magna cum laude, Cole Honors College. Jager Austin Barnes, cum laude. Allison Nicole Yob. Jasmine Carr, cum laude. Bailey Reed Sims, magna cum laude. Caitlin Claire Crawford. Bailey Johnson Dill, magna cum laude. Nadia Yvette Amani Shropshire, magna cum laude. Raven Goodlow. Laura Catherine Nicholson. Maggie Kate Ruff. Emily Leanne Burtnett Mack. Caitlin Selena Murphy, magna cum laude. Cole Honor Co Honors College. Kevin McBride, summa cum laude. Mason A.I. Stitt, cum laude. Daly Inman. Austin Lee Crowden. Rachel Paige McIntyre. Madison Lee Littrell. Haley Elizabeth Killen, cum laude. Marissa Diane Ray. Catherine Grace Bryant, magna cum laude. Carly Jackson. Trinity Zimmerman Hunter. Hannah Catherine Cook. Chloe Hyde Agar. Melanie Joy Beal. Grayson Holland Wilkins. Emma Francis Pointer, cum laude. Sarah Williams, cum laude, Cole Honors College. 
Kelly J. Carroll, magna cum laude. Bianca Montrese Phillips. Elizabeth Velador Garcia West, cum laude. Jane Catherine Glaskins, magna cum laude. Timothy Jacob Smith. Sydney Blair Holt, magna cum laude. Carly Parker Beal. Rahema Cheek Gesicki. Kellen Stevens Nikus. Ladavian Alfonza Lovelady. Taylor Ray Casals, cum laude. Nadia Marie Stewart, cum laude. Caden Roy McGuire. Ginger Janes Willingham. Lindsey K. Goodwin, summa cum laude, Cole Honors College. Kelly Page Hester, cum laude. Lee Williams. Lily Ann Oakley, magna cum laude. Abigail Hope Kentrell, cum laude. Bailey Ann Covington, summa cum laude. Taylor Samuel James, cum laude. April Shannon McVeigh, magna cum laude. Molly Brooke Thigpen. Tierra Nicole Hill. Jennifer K. Weathers, magna cum laude. Michelle Jean Long, cum laude. Leah Jordan Gunderman, magna cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Harris, cum laude. Erica Endress Mueller, cum laude, Cole Honors College. Erin Margaret Ball, cum laude. Megan Diane Smith, cum laude. Brooke Michelle Schubert, cum laude, Cole Honors College. Kurt Albert Peck. Kayla Nicole Jones. Brantley Faith Jackson, cum laude. Claire Elizabeth Coggin. Helen Leslie Huffman. Anna Grace Cohen. Danielle Pettis, magna cum laude. Faith Phillips, cum laude. Celia Shea Malone, summa cum laude. K. 
Kaylin Rianne Shelton. Benjamin Trey Letzinger, summa cum laude. Yeah. Madeline Renee McBride, cum laude. Yeah. Maddie Elizabeth Puckett, summa cum laude. James Brantley Bishop, cum laude. Madison Marie Stacy, magna cum laude. Abby Grace Green, cum laude. Jackson Kier Carson. Jared Lamar Kent. Madeline Huffman, cum laude. Kylie Suzanne Aaron, summa cum laude. Cameron Wasson, summa cum laude. Kayla Diane Yunk Yunkin, cum laude. Presley Faith Brewer, magna cum laude. Aaron Holly, summa cum laude. Katie Brooke Clanton. Catherine Ruth Morrow, summa cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Mooney, summa cum laude. Caitlin Elizabeth Taylor. Bailey Paul Motes, magna cum laude. Audra Victoria Grisham. Claire Elizabeth Newell, magna cum laude. Isabella Fowler. Kristen Hope Harrison. Brianna Gail Johnson. Caitlin Louise Hedden. Regan Kathleen Hessian. Audra Rain Kunselman, Cole Honors College. Abby Elizabeth Wade. Anna Ruth Price. Autumn Faith Stewart, cum laude. Heather Marie Hogan, cum laude. Hannah Campbell. Victoria Brooke Dawson. Ailey Rhiannon Martin. Melissa Lynn Fisher. David Craig Cunningham. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me as we honor all these graduates with a well-deserved round of applause.
Graduates, stand up and look at these people who have loved you and encouraged you through this. Thank them. Thank you all, and please be seated as we near the conclusion of the ceremony. We love commencement. It's a happy day. Graduates, truly, we commend you for your hard work, the personal sacrifices, and the perseverance that have led you to the platform this evening to receive these degrees. As you leave this university to make your mark in the world, I have but one request as president. Take UNA with you. Wherever you go, take this wonderful, beautiful, historic university, carry it in your heart wherever you go. And when you run into fellow alumni, wherever that might be, greet them with that hearty roar lions and know that we send our very best to you. I would like to thank Dr. Ross Alexander, Mr. Ron Patterson, Dr. Vicki Pierce, Dr. Katie Kinney, and Professor Patrick Shrimshock for their assistance with tonight's program. And we thank each of you in the audience for joining us to celebrate these graduates. At this time, I would ask everyone to please rise for the playing of the alma mater. 